But now we know that some forms of temporary threshold shift are, in fact, permanent. In, in the meantime, let's talk about hearing loss. Let's talk about what happens when we go to a loud concert. I, I fear I've done this. And um, you get too close to the speakers or they're just turned up too loud. And the acoustics of the room make it such that you have ringing in your ears the next day. If you have ringing in your ears after a concert or some other auditory experience, does that mean that some level of permanent damage was done? Possibly. <laughs> and why I say possibly is that until maybe 10 years ago, we thought that if you go to a concert like that, you have ringing in your ears, you may even feel like your ear is clogged, and then it goes away, that that is temporary threshold shift. But now we know that some forms of temporary threshold shift are in fact permanent. Although your hearing may come back, and in fact we can see it on audiometric testing, we now know that the wheel has been set in motion where synapses that connect these sensory cells to neurons that contact them have been damaged or destroyed by loud sound. It takes them a long time to degenerate. And in fact, it's led to the concept of the so-called hidden hearing loss. So there is obvious hearing loss that you can measure on audiograms, but now we have a new appreciation for the type of hearing loss that you are describing, and it's more common among young people. And if they go through standard audiometric testing, it'll be perfect. However, they report that they cannot hear clearly in a noisy background, or they have this tinnitus that they didn't have before. If you go to a concert that you have referred to, it's not uncommon that it's between 110 and 120 decibel. Well, most of music concerts that use amplified music are above 92 decibel. But it's not that everyone develops hearing loss, and it's not that we have to stop enjoying music concerts at all. It's just that we have to take precautionary measures. 